Hi. In today's lecture, we're going to talk about SFTP, which stands for Secure File Transfer Protocol. What this is, it's a fast way for you to move your files that you've been creating out onto the web. So secure file transfer is just really a common way of moving files from your computer off to either someone else's computer, off to your server, or even up to some other computer that's in within your business. People use the terms FTP and SFTP interchangeably. What's important for you to know is that the S stands for secure. So a lot of times people are going to require that you use the SFTP protocol instead of the FTP protocol. So when I say the word protocol, hopefully in your mind that's causing a little bit of a flashback into our early lectures when we talked about how browsers interact with the files that are sent to them. So with HTTP or HTTPS, your browser knows, oh, here's a file that she wants me to display. I should ignore all the tags and go ahead and put up a nice site for them. In the same way, you may have seen that there's a file protocol, which works pretty much the same way and says they've been making a web page and it's been existing on their, on their computer. With SFTP or FTP, what is going on is the browser is being told, don't display these files. We actually want you to transfer them from one computer to another. What's also really nice about most FTP or SFTP software programs is that they let you drag and drop the files instead of uploading them one at a time. So let's say that you're ready to go ahead and do secure file transfer. There's a few things that you're going to need. The first is you're going to need what we call an FTP client. What this is is a software that you will use to connect between the different machines. If you're using a PC, a common software program is WinSCP. If you're using a Mac, many people use Fugu or Cyberduck. No matter which one of these three programs you want to use, they're all free for download. Once you have your client, you need to go back and find out what the FTP address for your host is. When you signed up for a hosting service, they probably sent you an email that was full of information that you didn't really understand. It's time for you to finally dive, in, dive into that email and start using the information. So let's go ahead and do it together. So here's the email that my hosting service sent to me with all the information I was going to need to connect to my site. Now, if you look, I have different things such as my account details and the site administration that tells me how I can connect if I was going to use something called cPanel. But since I'm using FTP, or in my case, SFTP, what I need to know is the address, the port, and then there's also my username and my password. In many cases, they don't specify a port, but my particular hosting service did. So let's go ahead and copy this, and I'm going to log on with CyberDuck. Now, as many of you bring up CyberDuck, some of you may end up having a picture very, or a little graphic very similar to mine. If nothing showed up, what I want you to do is go up to the top, and you should have a file. And this is true if you're using WinSCP or Fugu instead. And you want to go, you're going to want to go to Open Connection, and that's what brought me up here. So when I click on Open Connection, one of the first things you need to decide is whether you're going to be using FTP or SFTP. Next, you need to put in your server, and if you need to, your port. Finally, go ahead and put in your username and password. Hopefully, you've remembered all that information, and the connection is going to pop up for you. Don't be surprised if you forgot once or twice what that connection is and if it pops up a warning. All right, once your window pops up, you're going to see that you have a few different folders. These different folders contain different information that your, that your hosting service may or may not want to be shared. So for instance, think about any website that you go to, such as Facebook, Amazon. What's going on is that there are a lot of files that are going into being built, building these sites, but they only want you to be able to see some of them. And those files that they want you to see, they need to reside in the public HTML folder. So when I go in here, what I want to just warn you about is that when I click on the public HTML folder and you click on it, it's going to look very different. The reason for that is that I've already uploaded a lot of files, and for you, it's most likely that the only file that's in there is something called CGI bin, and you want to just pretty much leave that one alone. Now, what you want to do next is start dragging and dropping some of the files that you want to see. So let's go ahead and look at a site that I was, can use in this example. I'm going to go ahead and bring this open. And it's just a little site I have about Ashtabula. It's got a picture and a couple maps on it. And if I go to the intro website, you can see 
that it doesn't exist there. There's nothing there. We get a 404, which means, hey, you asked for this file and it doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and move those files over using Cyberduck. So I'm going, all the code I want to upload is over here. It's in a folder called Ashtabula. With many other services, I would need to go in and upload each file one by one. But instead, I'm going to drag this entire folder over and drop it in. By the way, when you drop it in, make sure you're dropping it in right into public HTML, not into a subfolder if you have one, not into CGI bin. Great. So there's Ashtabula. Let's try reloading my folder. And you can see that I come very close to success. I've got the two maps, but the top picture is missing. Instead, all we see is the alt text. It's basically saying, I can't find that picture. So let's take a look and see what it's supposed to be looking at. I'm going to go to right click, inspect element. And you can see it says, hey, I cannot find this picture down here. You're asking me to upload something called harborjty.jpg. I don't know what that is. All right, let's check out Cyberduck. Here's Ashtabula, here's images, and you can see, oh, but the picture's right there. But if you look really closely, you can see I used lowercase h over here and an uppercase h over here. I need to change the code. There are two ways you can do that. You can either edit it right within here, or you can change it on your computer and drag it up again. Let's go ahead and just edit it right here. Oops. Actually, that's not because I, that's the picture. What I really want to edit is the HTML file. I'm glad I made that mistake. You can keeps you from making it yourself. So I'm going to change this lowercase h to an uppercase h, save it, and let's try reloading. Boom. Success. We've got the file just as we wanted it. Now, any time that you change a file, you're going to have to remember that any changes you make, you need to drag and drop back up. All right? So that's one of the main reasons people have trouble with FTP, is that they forget what they've uploaded and what they haven't. That's why I really like the ability to drag an entire folder over one at a time, as well as individual files. Let's go ahead and review just a little bit. You can upload your files many ways. You can use cPanel, you can use Fugu, you can use Cyberduck, you can use WinSCP. There isn't a single right way to do it. But the most important thing is before you can go ahead and use any of these software tools, it's important for you to know your login information. So hold on to that email when your hosting service sends it to you. You'd be really glad you did. Good luck.